Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the grand debut of the AIAC APAC pre -moot. By way of introduction, my name is Balkis, case counsel at the ASEAN International Arbitration Center, and I shall be the MC for today. A little brief note about our event. The AIAC is a not-for-profit, non-governmental, international arbitral institute formed pursuant to the host country agreement between the government of Malaysia and the ASEAN African Legal Consultative Organization, ALCO. The ASEAN Pacific Vice Premier, APVPM, is an independent body leading the promotion of diversity and inclusion in the muting space through dedicated efforts to ensure that every participant becomes an integral part of the Vismuth family. Their success was orchestrated via the large participation online for the year 2022 and 2023, gathering more than 100 participants globally. Combined with each other's strengths and passion for the pre -moot, the AIAC and APVPM is proud to establish the inaugural AIAC APAC pre -moot. With this collaboration in mind, we are embarking on an adventure that brings together law students, mootis, educators, arbitrators, as well as legal enthusiasts across the globe under one roof one joint moot. With that, let us invite the Director of the AIAC, Datuk Sundra Raju, and Director of the Asia Pacific Vis Premoot, Ms. Alex Povey, for the signing ceremony of the agreement to formalize our collaboration. Yep, we will sign first. Huh? Okay. I didn't realize uh, Alex's name, full name is Alexandra. <laughs> a very nice name, Skinner. Skinner is a very famous uh, Anglo-Indian name. You know? it's, a, it's a very famous uh, military officer. He had his own regiment in India. Yeah, quite. Oh, it didn't sign. Okay, done. Thank you, Dr. Sundra Raju and Ms. Alex Povey for the signing of the collaboration agreement. Finally, this marks the official collaboration between the two parties that will join their forces towards the biggest pre moot held next year. With the next item in our agenda, we are pleased to showcase our video to mark the launching of the inaugural AIAC APEC pre -moot. Oh, they have lost her. 
no sound. Amazing, amazing video. Let us all move on to the most awaited agenda, the panel discussion on the grand debut of AIAC APEC pre -moot. Let us welcome the list of panel speakers very much known to the muting community. Mr. Samir Shah, the moderator for today, who is also an advocate, arbitrator, mediator, founding trustee of ADR Bar India. Dato Sundaraju, director of the ASEAN International Arbitration Center. Ms. Alex Povey, director, ASEAN Pacific Vice Premoot. Dr. Rajesh Sharma, from the RMIT University, Australia. Professor Dr. Aja Ra, founding partner, ANR Law LLP. Ms. Heather Yi, Assistant Director, Asian International Arbitration Center, as well as Ms. Mahat Rathi, Advocate, High Court of Delhi. Let us pass the floor to Mr. Samir Shah to take over the panel discussion as the moderator. The floor is yours, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Valkis. Thank you for those that brief introduction of all the panelists. Uh, first of all, let me congratulate all of us for this uh, historical moment. Um, really speaking, this is, I mean, for me personally, it's really a dream come true. That's what I have written my post as well. Uh, because this is a really historical moment when one of the two biggest, you know, organizations in the pre-moot join, have joined hands together to start a global saga of inclusive learning in international commercial arbitration. I mean, this is a very, very unique uh, theme, um, of course, uh, mooted by none other than uh, my ins inspiration, Dr. Rajesh Sharma, uh, who gave us this uh, vision and path for uh, making this happen and have this unique theme. Um, and so we are today witnessing all this historical moment of uh, signing in of the joint collaboration between our two organizations. Um, APAC, uh, just in brief, started in 2022. Uh, it was a thought process or a vision of myself in a way to just give it back to the mooting community, especially students, to hone their skills and you know intellect in international commercial arbitration. However, this would not have been happening you know, possible without the able support of the other intellect and, you know, like-minded people. Uh, of course, Dr. Rajesh Sharma, Dr. Ajarab, Mahek, and Alex. Uh, so we conducted uh, the first uh, pre in 2022, overwhelming response, though we termed as Asia Pacific, but it was a real global participation. Uh, this year as well, we had uh, similar, um, you know, participation. AIAC, of course, uh, is is a name to reckon with Premoot. It has been conducted since long, much more, much before APAC. Uh, the only difference being, of course, that we were totally virtual and AIAC was doing in person, and therefore this game, uh, you know, this thought to me to explore a possibility of why don't we join hands together to make it the biggest ever pre moot to happen? And today we are witnessing that. And, you know, I, I really feel so honored and privileged to, to, to share this panel with two of my most inspiring people on there, Datuk Sundar Raju and Dr. Rajesh Sharma. Um, so Datuk, I would invite you first to share your uh, experience and your you know vision of uh, when you uh, started the pre-moot for AIC, which was actually at that point of time KLRCA. 
So uh, would, I would invite you to speak and share with us all your experience into this uh, journey of Remote and the event with uh, AIAC. Uh, thank you, uh, Shamir. Uh, thank you, colleagues, friends. Uh, uh, it is a great privilege to be on the same panel with uh, uh, such an esteemed group of people, people who are creators and uh, are able to carry through this vision. I'm very confident that we will succeed. Uh, in 2015, we, KLRC, moved into this new building. And when we moved into this new building, uh, we had the state of art uh, facilities, 24 hearing rooms, two large hearing rooms, 27 auditorium where we are now. We had uh, uh, lots of uh, space, two discrete buildings, a complete compound, uh, everything. So at that moment, I also realized that uh, this Vismuts, but I was involved in the Vismuts much earlier, going as arbitrator, uh, sometimes to Vienna, but I've never been to Hong Kong. Sorry, Alex, I've never been to Hong Kong. I've always gone to Vienna for whatever reason uh, to sometimes participate in the, but more to meet friends, uh, more to meet friends. Because uh, uh, when you go to the Vismuts, uh, just like a young people, you will make new friends and meet new teams. Uh, the, the, the older people actually go and meet up with their arbitrator friends who are all gathered there. And strangely, you know, it will be from the high and mighty to the lowest of lowest, uh, all are there. So everybody who's interested in some form of excuse, for us, uh, it is a reason because we wanted to uh, uh, impart our ability to, to perhaps uh, uh, judge in the mood. But more importantly, uh, we also socialized. Uh, so uh, the Vismuts took a life of its own. When I became a director in 2010, one of the ideas was to get our rules to be used in the Vismuts. So, you know, because when you get the rules used in the Vismuts, then uh, you get the prominence and, uh, and, uh, and uh, the, the students uh, and other people, including the arbitrators, become familiar with your rules. So uh, that is one, one reason why we started. The other thing is that uh, education. We wanted to provide and provide the training ground for people to become uh, counsels, advocates, uh, and understand the arbitral process. Uh, because there is no formal training in arbitration in most of the courses in Malaysia, law courses. The only training that people seem to get is when they do the moots. If you realize that they may have an optional subject on arbitration, but they don't have anything practical. So, uh, I mean, 2015, we started uh, and we always had that space so we could organize uh, the largest. At one point, we had 100 over teams. Uh, we could bring in uh, easily. But then I think there was a budget problem uh, of bringing a lot of teams and taking care of young people is not easy. Eh? You're, you're, you become quite responsible for them, you know, because they, they go around the town and you're a bit worried. So you organize the thing, you're a bit careful. You don't want anything untoward to happen. So that actually went on. But the tradition was maintained. Eh? Every year, we will start to participate in it until our use, uh, the, our rules were being used. But when I left the center, I think Shame and the team, which I, we see on what the panel that is there, the core people came out with this virtual mood idea, which was amazing. I know first time we didn't require premises. We didn't require anything except uh, people participating. We did all the same things, except not meeting in one, one particular place. We met virtually. And uh, I, I, I was actually inspired by it and uh, taken up. You know, I congratulate you all, uh, particularly Shame, Rajesh, uh, uh, Ajab, Alex, uh, and uh, everyone who was involved. It's amazing. I, in fact, uh, I, I was thinking when I came in, Shame came out with this idea that we should join forces because we have the premises and we were already planning to organize on site. 
how do we actually bring together and uh, build on each other's uh, strengths? And this is the result. And I'm quite sure that it will go on for many years. Uh, uh, we have identified core people. I'm quite sure there will be a succession arrangement after this, uh, if need be. But uh, you know, when I'm not there, I'm quite sure we will continue. That is why first year we will try. Next few years, we will actually make sure that it continues uh, in one way or another. Uh, I think uh, I talked to Stefan and asked him whether he will come to the finals as he goes to uh, uh, Moots uh, East uh, in Hong Kong. So he may stop by. In fact, I spoke to him in Vienna this uh, last March and he agreed in principle, but already at that time, we were already discussing about doing this. So uh, thank you so much again for your trust, for your contribution, and more importantly, for your commitment. And, and y'all are all inspiring to me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Dadok. I mean, um, it always been so inspiring to listen to you and, you know, uh, you you are a real visionary. In fact, I still remember when I met you in Malaysia in 2011 uh, in the old KLRCA premises, and when you showed to us, uh, you know, your plans and all that actually inspired me more uh, to you know follow your footsteps to have these kind of visions into uh, international arbitration. So thank you so much for your support and guidance, uh, as always. And thank you for being there with us uh, whenever we need them. And I'm I am also pretty confident that this collaboration and joining hands together will strengthen our own, each other's strengths and will really make it real big, the global event. The way today, as you see, we are a global panel. I mean, I am joining from US, Ajar and Mag from India, you from you and either from Malaysia, Alex from Hong Kong, and Professor Rajesh Sharma from Australia. So we have practically covered the world. So and that's exactly and, and, the and spirit. of course not forgetting Mahan. <laughs> you know she's yeah, always yeah, yeah. there. <laughs> He's yeah, like she, a... <laughs> she. She and Alex actually share a similar you know yeah. work uh, you know theory in the sense. Alex, the way Alex has been for Vizis, Mahak is for APAC for that matter. So, yeah, so we are a truly global, uh, you know, uh, organization now and we'll keep it that way. So thank you, sir. Thank you uh, so much for that uh, inspiring uh, journey, sharing inspiring journey with us. Let me now invite uh, uh, Dr. Professor Rajesh Sharma, another of my inspiring uh, mentor, and of course, the visionary behind this unique theme of inclusivity. Sir, um, I request you to please share your thoughts as to uh, what made you uh, think about this unique uh, theme. And uh, I know you are, of course, uh, one of the members of the ICC task force on inclusivity. Uh, and uh, so please, uh, share your thoughts and maybe a, a message to the mooting community because you have been one of the pioneering person for visits for so many years to happen in Hong Kong. Over to you, sir. First of all, uh, namaste everyone. And uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Um, it is really a pleasure to see this and again, the historic moment when the two organizations are signing, joining hand, I will not say signing MOU, but joining hand to do something very meaningful for the next generation. I won't say Gen X, now we are calling Gen Z. So for that uh, group of people we are looking at. Um, as Datuk said that, uh, like, you know, we have been following the VIS right from the beginning. And for 30 years, we have followed that. We 20 years for the VCist. So long experience and everything. So when we started like Samirji and all the team members, when they joined together and we wanted to start a VIS pre-moot, uh, we didn't want this pre-moot 
just to be another competition where the team will come and try and test their argument and go forward and then jump into the VCist or the Vis Vienna. Because always they always look at it as a bouncing platform, like kind of a thing for that. But we thought that no, this Vis Primut should be something else. And that's how we come to the conclusion that in our experience of so many years, we have found that there are many students from many parts of the world are still not included. And if they are not included through this organization, through this competition, what is happening is that they are not getting or they are not learning the legal skills which every lawyer or every law student should acquire. It's not only the students who join the VSMOOT competition, they should learn that skills. That skills should be available to everyone. And that was our idea. So when we look at that during the COVID or a blessing in disguise, um, when we were doing the not competition, but even teaching, we come to know that when we are doing online, there were a group of students who could not follow and they were lagging behind. For example, those who have a hearing uh, problem or impairment, uh, they cannot listen to the people. So we didn't have the uh, subtitle or anything. So they were missing out. Then slowly and slowly, we come to know that we have to include those people. And when we look around the team, none of the teams include any students with any kind of a disability because they are just looking at the competition side of it. And because of that, they think that they might lose out in the competition. Therefore, they just ignore it. So what is happening is that, or what was happening in a way, is that a group of people, who want to learn, who wants to do the as good as anybody else, but for their some uh, disabilities, they are not included. And that is very bad thing. And we thought that why not we should include it. And fortunately, at that time, the ICC also come up with the idea, uh, Claudia Solomon, the first uh, uh, female president, she also come up with the idea that we should include disability inclusion in international commercial arbitration. So I, on my own, I volunteer for that task force and get involved in that. But I was happy to tell them that this moot competition is already in the line and it is already doing the job what they want to do it for the trained lawyers. And my argument with them was that we cannot include the trained lawyers in international commercial arbitration if we do not start the training and the confidence building right from the law school. And what is the best way? And the best way is to put them in the mooting competition. And for that, the VIS competition is one of the best in the arbitration. So why not to start from there? And I come up with this idea and I talk to my team. And thanks to my team members and colleagues, they immediately, without even single word, they just say, yes, that's a very good idea. And then we draw the passion that we are doing something meaningful for this group of people. Now around the world, whether you look at European Union, in Australia, everywhere, now there's an awareness is coming up that lawyers are not marathon runners or a sprinter. They are using their brain. As long as their brain is working, no matter whether they can see or they cannot hear, as long as their mind works, they can be as effective as anybody else. And that was the idea. So Datuk, when we uh, joined with you, our main aim is also to include those regions in the world, those countries in the world, which have not yet got the experience of arbitration, mooting, or a kind of a legal education. So therefore, for example, like Australian continent, uh, African continent is still untouched. And we have to bring small economies, small island countries, we have to bring them in. And our aim is that we are treating this one as a legal skills training, not just as a competition, not just as a learning for arbitration and CISG, but much more than that. We want every law students to learn how to do research, how to make the argument, how to write the good memo. All those things we want to give them as a package because the mooting is nothing but accelerated way of learning. And this is what we want to include in that. And so we are really thankful to you and AIAC and that to, to join that with our colleagues here. And I feel that whatever time we are giving is a very meaningful and it is really coming from our heart and we are very passionate about it. And this year we want to go even further in that. And with your blessings and support, we will certainly do it. So thank you very much for everyone for supporting us and believing in us. Thank you, sir. That was exactly the 
the thought process which uh, I wanted you to share with us and what more to give an example of inclusivity that last this year uh, we managed to have a blind barrister as one of the judges in the finals. This shows our commitment towards inclusivity and we'll take it forward from here. Uh, let me now move on to uh, another passionate uh, panelist, uh, Dr. Ajar Rab. I mean, uh, uh, for me, he is Ajar, so I hope he he allows me to address him as Ajar. Um, he's a known uh, face, known name in the in the mooting committee. No introduction. He is one of the most sought after trainer and coach for the team across the different uh, you know jurisdictions uh, and equally passionate uh, uh, you know person himself into arbitration so ajar um, let me invite you and you know ask you about your experience uh, with apac and as such into international commercial arbitration and coaching the student community Thank you, sir. I think I'll, I'm Ajar to everybody on this panel, and I choose to, and I believe that I should be so. Uh, I actually uh, started the Mutin journey first time, I think in 2017, if I'm not mistaken, and I met Alex. And frankly, I was amazed by the level of organization that Alex put together in the West East. You know, and I remember dropping her an email saying, how do you manage to do it? because so many different people coming from so many different places. And that got to me, you know, that got to me in the sense of how is it that such a big event is run? And why are why is not everybody from India participating? And then I happened to meet Samir sir, who in a coffee shop told me, let's get more Indians uh, into this mood. And, you know, I realized, and then uh, Samir sir introduced me to uh, Professor Sharma and that's how the, the train ran. And ultimately, I had the pleasure of uh, meeting uh, Datuk Sundar Raju this year in Vienna. And we had long conversations about the future of uh, the arbitration in the Southeast and mooting in general. And, you know, for one thing that mooting does is it sharpens your skill set as a counsel. The reason that I coach or that I train is because it's amazing how each team from a different culture comes up with an entirely brand new way of reading the problem, right? And at that point, you realize that even though facts are set in stone, like Professor Sharma said, the brain is always working. The perspective doesn't need hearing or sight. It just needs your application of mind. And therefore, what amazed me about Mooting was that maybe as, as a lack of skill set in my own head as to why can't I read it from so many different angles, right? And that when, uh, uh, you know, Samir said, asked me if I wanted to be part of APAC, I was like, well, hell yes, because uh, how else do you, do you get on each side of, uh, of the Mutin community, but to organize, understand what goes into it, how do you deal with um, different issues that come up and practically, it's not very different in the real world. I mean, today we're talking about mediation and all sorts of dispute resolution. Well, disputes happen in moots as well, right? And it's it's all, I, I basically, I think I should be the one saying I was part of the learning saga, right? And I got on to just learn. But having been part of the risk community for some time now, I think the real takeaway is that it trains you to think and it trains you to think in a way that ordinary education cannot. And when you add a lot of culture and different legal diversity to it, I remember in Vienna this year, uh, there was a coach who asked the team from the Middle East, what about interest? And then in the feedback realized, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have asked you about interest because there is no interest in the Middle East, right? It, Sharia law does not allow interest. And that's when you realize things that we take for being so obvious, so common, we take them for granted, just like people who are left out of the mutant, mutant community. And I really think this endeavor is there for people who don't have access to uh, funding, who can't travel, 
who want to participate but don't have the means. I know when we were discussing about including a lot of uh, countries from different places, we realized that people may not have stable internet connections. And even during APAC, we had that trouble. But the idea is not to leave them out. The idea is to still have them. And that is why I am very grateful to the APAC team. I'm very grateful to Datu, uh, Heather, that for including me in, in this journey where we can give back the privilege that we have received, uh, maybe as God's blessing. And I look forward to contributing in any meaningful way that I can to pass on the education to people. Thank you, sir. Ajay, thank you so much. Uh, we are not going to leave you just like that. Uh, we'll make you uh, real busy now since we are moving to a much bigger scale. All right. So thank you so much for that, for your uh, continued support and help. Uh, let me now uh, move to one of the most important person for this whole journey to be successful. And that is Alex. And now, of course, she doesn't need any introduction to the mooting community at all. Um, she has been the, the backbone of uh, Viziest for almost more than a decade. Correct, Alex? Yeah, yeah, about fifteen yeah, years. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yes. so that's true. so that's true. Uh, and I think uh, she was the first person probably I approached when this idea of organizing this pre moot came to my mind, and she readily accepted that to support uh, this uh, endeavor, and that's how APEC came into being, and that's how today this joint venture came into being. So Alex, uh, let me uh, ask you about your journey of the Vizist and uh, what actually prompted you to join this uh, event of inclusivity? Thank you, Samir. Well, it's I suppose it's a bit of a long story, but I'll cut it short. <laughs> um, so actually, I, I took part in mooting when I was at college, um, and that was my first experience. Um, of, of It was a mini moot. It was pre-Viz. Um, I don't think the Viz had even started yet. I don't like to do the calculation because it ages me an awful lot, but <laughs> I think it was maybe around that age, around that time. Um, but anyway, the, the mini moot that I did at college was just amazing. It, it showed me the benefits of mooting. It actually helped me develop friendships with people at college that I hadn't had really much interaction with in the first place. And just that really first tiny mini moot gave me that little insight. Um, and I loved the experience because so much, I learned so much from it. And so then fast forward X amount of years and I met Louise Barrington and uh, she asked me to be part of the um, organization for the Viz East. I thought, oh, yeah, I remember those days. I remember that thing, the moot. Let me get into it. Let me see what it's about. And when I started doing it, I, I you know, straight away, I, I got into it and I started meeting all these amazing students who were working so hard, all these professionals who were putting in so much time and dedication. So they really, all of them blew me away, actually. The, the effort that everyone put into this, it was just amazing. Um, and I could see also what the students were getting from it as well. Obviously, my tiny experience gave me a bit of an insight, but watching them, um, you know, come together from all around the world, um, they developed these friendships, these relationships with each other, which went on into their professional lives. And as Ajay said, you know, we learn things about people from international experiences and learn things about the world that we would never have learned in the first place. So for the students, I could see this was something really, really important. Um, you know, it helps sort of bring dialogues together, it helps bring cultures together. It just, it goes beyond just the mooting experience itself, I think, actually. It really carries on into your later life. And so watching the students grow and develop, and then after a number of years, come back again as arbitrators 
I thought that was just thrilling. And then they got to sit on panels with very experienced seasoned arbitrators and learn more again from them. And so they just continued their journey. It wasn't just that they came one year and that was it. It was, it really is this continuous journey. And I just, and I just, you know, I obviously 15 years later, I loved it. It really, really spoke to me so much. Um, and, you know, I can see the benefits obviously for professionals as well, you know, the networking and the relationships, you know, as Datuk said, you know, we, we go to the, to go to Vienna and Vizis to, to see our old friends. I mean, I went to Vienna actually to, to, to see how they run it over there one year. And it was amazing because I wasn't organizing. So I got to have fun for once. And I, I saw people there that I had seen in the Vizis, but I'd never managed to have a coffee with, you know, I got to have conversations <laughs> and experience it like the professionals um, who had been coming to the Viz East. And it was really, yeah, just this family that grows and develops over the years. I just loved it. So then when Samir came to me with the idea of the, uh, the APAC mood, I thought, oh yeah, actually, I really like this because I could see so much more potential. Um, you know, there's, there's things that that we can do is maybe as a pre moot which um, are not always easy to do in other circumstances. So we we could really sort of um, grow the pre moot and develop it in certain different ways. And so then when Rajesh came with the idea of inclusivity and diversity, I mean, I didn't even need a second to say yes. Um, it was just straight away, oh, absolutely, brilliant idea. I wish I thought of it. Um, it was just, you know, 100% yes. It was, and what, so, you know, there have been things when I was running the Viz East that I wanted to do that a little bit more, but my hands were tied to an extent, the things that I couldn't do. But now with the APAC, we can do them. You know, we're no longer bound by, by certain conformities, et cetera. We can make this ourselves. And so seeing what we can do to help the students to help them grow, you know, financially, as has been said, if, you know, if they want to join us, they can, it's, it's no longer an impediment for them. Um, you know, if people have got, um, have some disability or some in, in um, challenge, let's say, to, to join the moot, then we simply ask, please contact us, let us see how we can help you. We'll, we'll work on this together, we'll include you, we'll work it out, just contact us. And so that I just thought was, yeah, 100 percent yes. Um, you know, it's an amazing training ground. It's it's just uh, it's fantastic. And so then, you know, then of course the icing on the cake was when Samira said, "Should we join with AIC?" Oh wow, you know, my heart stopped a beat there, going, "Wow, okay, absolutely." <laughs> um, so the whole thing has just been so thrilling. Um, I'm really, really excited for this year. I think that it's just going to be something we phenomenal. We are recording it. <laughs> um, it's going to be something really phenomenal. We're really, um, yeah, it's just going to be great. I'm so, so excited. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Alex. And really, um, you know, we are sort of creator of uh, a histor historical moment for the meeting community across the globe. And definitely it is going to go down uh, in the history as a, a, a pioneering endeavor for the learning uh, and for the betterment of the student community across the globe. Um, so thank you so much, Alex, for the support and uh, the, the logistic backbone of uh, this whole event, uh, I would say. Um, let me now invite uh, Heather. Um, I know, you know, Heather um, assisting Datuk is not an easy task uh, for that matter, <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a privilege, you know, an honor that to, to assist him and to learn uh, so much from him. So would you like to share about your journey into uh, 
the arbitration world and especially with uh, Datuk and AIAC. Yes, um, thank you so much, Mr. Samir. In fact, I'm very honored to be sharing this panel um, with all these esteemed panelists and especially Dr. Sundra sitting next to me. <laughs> so Dr. Sundra has always been instrumental in my journey in arbitration. Um, I learned everything about arbitration through him and um, thank you. Um, so I still remember vividly when the first meeting we had with Mr. Sambe, thinking, talking about the ideas of having a joint mood together. So that we will look in through a um, meeting where I still remember we was just sitting in the meeting room discussing whether it's feasible. And Dr. Sundra had the idea like, let's make it work. And fast forward, I think that was like two months ago or three months ago, fast forward, we are here talking about the launch. And now we can see that um, we are expecting everyone here physically as well in March next year. So that it's really momentous for us. And I have to thank the team behind the scene as well. Uh, all of them are actually sitting in front um, of this auditorium today. Thank you um, to all the team, yes, for helping to make this work. And especially uh, Miss Alex um, for, you know, guiding us, providing us some sort of, um, you know, directions throughout the conversations. And Miss Mahak, uh, Professor, uh, Dr. Samir, Mr. Samir. Uh, in fact, I, I think this mood, it's the first time that we're seeing the joint forces and we are seeing the shared resources that we're looking at. And hopefully, um, as highlighted earlier by esteemed panelists, this is not just a competition. Um, I think Dr. Sundra also mentioned, it's um, opportunity to make friends, to network as well. And especially not only the teams, but also the potential arbitrators that are joining us on board uh, to judge the sessions later on. So I'm really looking forward to this. And um, that actually will be my sharing from it. But thank you so much. Thank you, Hida. And uh, we'll uh, expect your continued uh, support uh, for this event to be successful. Um, last and not the least, uh, I invite Mehek. Um, you know, as our body has cannot be there without a backbone. So Mehek and Alex are the two person who are the backbone of the whole event. Um, without her support, without her, you know, continuous, uh, you know, uh, help, this uh, we would not be able to uh, organize APEC for that matter. So Mehek, thank you so much for always being there at just one call away i know i have been disturbing you at many odd hours and you have still been you know answering and doing telling me school so why don't you share your experience uh or on this journey of pre-mood and and what what has been uh your uh you know uh sort of uh you know uh, thought process which made you do it with us. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, I think I'm, uh, no, I am the youngest in the core committee and it was actually a great learning experience for me to learn from each one of them. I still remember Samir sir discussing the whole idea of the pre moot with me and we were sitting and he was like, will you be able to do it? I, I have done quite a lot of events in past in a capacity of being an organizer. I thought it won't be that difficult. And I said, of course. And when we were actually doing the first edition, I was like, will I come out of it alive? <laughs> so I, I still remember uh, how we managed the first one. Uh, I've learned quite a lot from uh, each of the core committee members. Alex, ma'am, of course, how she plays around with her Excel sheets and how she manages to manually uh, do all the scheduling and everything. Me and Ajars are running around arranging arbitrators and she's sitting there, oh wait, I'll arrange something, I'll do something. So that's how it has worked. And I think uh, it would have just been a pre mood if Rajesh sir uh, did not came out with the idea of inclusivity and uh, diversity. Uh, it would never have occurred to us. And this is something which uh, made it more special. And uh, when uh, we started uh, having this, these uh, conversations, that made me also more aware, okay, these institutions are not disabled friendly. Our courts are not disabled friendly. So 
we also had that kind of perspective towards things and not only teams and arbitrators last year we also had a volunteer who was ajar sir's intern uh, she had some hearing disability but she was one of the most efficient uh, volunteers who's worked with us so i think uh, they've uh, such people have been uh, left behind just because of, of their disability just because of um of one thing but they are as efficient as us and maybe much better than uh, us so this was an effort to bring them to forefront there's a lot that we need to do uh, now if we are having two three teams now let's uh, try attempting getting more teams more arbitrators who are disabled and let's try doing uh, something for them and of course as uh, i said it was a great learning experience uh, for me and i'm looking forward to learn more thank you sir thank you mahak and uh, i think um, balkis is uh, yep can can i ask uh, the team that's actually sitting here who will be the backbone can you all just come up quickly just uh, show show <laughs> yourselves to so that they they see hidden behind who are the people actually uh, you 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 find that uh, these these are the people who actually do the work <laughs> yes <laughs> brian yes. shay you get them they you know, so, they yeah, really deserve the clap meet yes, them yes. Yeah, come 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 together uh, so we we have uh, it's it's recorded thanks to them and they will be doing all the work behind and they are always there so these are the people we have to also acknowledge how much work video done by him <laughs> <laughs> so you know a lot of things yeah. thank you so much again eh? so thank you so thanks thanks you so know, much yeah that look their their the their position is like you know the the director of the film who's always on behind the curtain it's always yeah. the actors who is on the limelight yeah, they are but the without crew. the directors or the producers you know nothing can happen yeah. the film cannot be run so yeah they are the most integral part and uh, we must acknowledge and uh, you know uh, appreciate their efforts so this i think brings to an end i i'm sure i know balkis you have been prompting uh, me for this so there. i ended here <laughs> i end <laughs> here and, and i was going to call you up we'll i had yeah <laughs> <laughs> we 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 will make it a big success thank you thank, thank you so you. much mr samusha for the skillfully moderated panel discussion to that end we thank all the panel speakers and moderator for their viewpoints and contribution to the discussion as well as the moderator for the wonderful navigation of the discussion made earlier we hope with this end comes the beginning of an amazing adventure for the premud family as a gentle reminder We are now opened for registration of the premoot and the registration could also be accessed on our official website www.aiacapacpremoot.com we look forward to hosting the biggest premoot of the year 2024 thank you all goodbye